Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. We're at VMworld 2015. One of the big subjects here at VMworld is what do we do with workloads? How can we make them more mobile? Of course, uh, you know, most data centers are mostly VMware today, but there's things like Hyper-V on the horizon and uh, AWS and, and just moving things into the cloud. So how do we make workloads more mobile? To help with that conversation, I've asked Jennifer Gill, she's the Director of Product Marketing at Zerto, to uh, talk to us about it on the whiteboard here. Jer Jennifer, help me out with this. Yeah, so at Zerto, um, with the release of 4.0 in May, we introduced support for Hyper-V and AWS because we wanted to enable exactly what you were saying, is we want to get people to have more mobility in the cloud and be able to use their infrastructure the way they want and satisfy all these different use cases, but looking at just SLA and price. We don't want them to be also considering you know, matching storage, matching levels of vSphere, matching hypervisors, et cetera. So we call this strategy the Zerto Cloud Continuity Platform. Okay. So if we look here at production, so I have a bunch of VMs. Now, most likely, this is VMware. It could be Hyper-V as well, but you know, based on us being at VMworld today, it most likely is VMware. Right. And if we look at market numbers, like VMware. Probably is, yeah. Probably VMware. But now, with the introduction of the Cloud Continuity Platform, we have options mm -hmm. for other use cases. So okay. for example, we could go to Hyper-V for DR. Okay. And use that as a disaster recovery site. Okay. So that's a lower cost option from the hypervisor side. Most likely customers already own Hyper-V because it's been bundled in. So now they have a real option there in terms of the hypervisor. So do I have to make any changes to my virtual machine to make this move? No, with really? Zerto, okay. yeah. So we have something called a virtual protection group and okay. it encapsulates the uh, VMs. Okay. And with that, it makes it so you can kind of, you have that mobility, it's now portable. Okay. So you'll point, replicate the data to the storage at the target site we're storage agnostic, so they can have whatever they want. Okay. And then once we build the VMs into the hypervisor, into Hyper-V, we're all set. So how about this cloud thing? Yeah, I hear so that cloud's going to be big, I don't know. I hear that cloud's going to be big too. Yeah. So with Amazon, so we have a couple of use cases there as well. So DR, of course, is a use case. Okay. We also have something called um, offsite backup. Okay. So if you replicate the data to the Hyper-V environment for disaster recovery, you can then take a third copy and put in AWS S3 storage just for backup purposes. Okay. Um, DR, but also test dev. Okay. Maybe you want to use a cheaper environment. You could go to Hyper-V as well, but you do find many customers that we're talking to are looking at AWS for test dev. So that's another option there with Amazon. So then what I could do here is I take that same group that you were talking about, put it up in the Amazon cloud and spin it up and do all my test work right there. Exactly. Okay, without having to buy servers and all that kind of other stuff that we normally have to buy. Yeah, when you look at the expense of the target DR site, yeah. it, it can be a lot of money. So um, many of the customers that we talk to, they already have the second site. So using it for DR is not a big deal. Okay. But we do talk to some smaller customers, they're like, gee, you know, having that second site kind of waiting for an accident. You know, it's, it's a big expense. So they're looking at AWS. Now they've taken this huge capital cost and made it a repeatable, repeatable OPEX expense that sure. they just pay every single month. Well, plus it's very accessible, too. The, the, even if this is a remote site, making sure you could actually get to it might, could be a problem as well for a smaller business. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Now you got uh, uh, 200 uh, CSPs drawn down here. What's their what's their role? Yeah, so we have over 200 cloud service providers that are part of the Zerto Cloud ecosystem. Okay. So if you want something a little bit more managed than Amazon, because Amazon's going to be all you, right, all the time. Mm -hmm. So with the Zerto Cloud ecosystem, you get access to experts who do disaster recovery all day long. They've probably done you know thousands of implementa implementations. They've managed DR plans. So now you can do disaster recovery as a service to the cloud service providers. And now you're gonna get, again, that OpEx expense. Gonna be a little bit more than you're gonna find in Amazon, of course. Mm -hmm. But you're gonna get experts that are available to you to run that. Okay, and then th th that would probably be really ideal for that mid-market sort of data centers that we were just talking about that might not have a remote site with IT staff to leverage these guys to do that, right? Yes, exactly. So we, we find a mix. In the mid-market, depending on where you land, you know, sometimes you do find they have that small remote site where they just run one or two applications for DR. You know, because every business has the application that, gee, if this is not available, mm -hmm. we're going to have some problems. Customer is going to be impacted, brand, revenues, et cetera. So some will have that second site, but then you do have some that, hey, I just want to go to that repeatable expense. I want to have experts. I want to know that someone's going to be there to run it. 
and Draz is a great option with our cloud service providers. Okay. Now, you said I don't have to make any changes to my virtual machines or anything in that, mm -hmm. for, as far as infrastructure. What do I need to get to make all this work? Just basically download your software? Yeah, so the Zerto uh, virtual replication is the product. It goes with the Zerto Cloud Continuity Platform strategy. Okay. So you will put on each ESX host a lightweight appliance. It's called a virtual replication appliance. This goes on the ESX host level. This is what does the replication. On a slight level, you have something called the Zerto Virtual Manager. Okay. Um, the one that's different is with Amazon. So we have something called a Zerto Cloud Appliance, and that's one service okay. that has all the services that you need together okay. that will deploy in the cloud. It's actually, it's funny, um, produ our production install is very easy. It's, you know, you install those two components, but with Amazon, since it's just the Cloud Appliance, it's even easier. How about with the uh, cloud service providers? Pretty straightforward there, too? Yep, so with, they'll have you know all the infrastructure installed on their site, and then they'll just deploy back the virtual replication appliances and the Zerto Virtual Manager. Okay, great. So what's a, what are some other use cases here? Cloud providers with the support of Hyper-V. So when you think about, we've talked about kind of the mid-size. When you get even lower to the even smaller mid-size customers, mm -hmm. they only have Hyper-V in their environment. And they're like hey, going to cloud providers, hey, I'd love to use you for DR. Do you have Hyper-V? They say, no, we have VMware, and be like, oh, right. sad. But now, because we support Hyper-V, now cloud service providers can go out and support the smaller Hyper-V um, customers, and they can do DR in to the VMware-based cloud. So okay. that opens up a whole other market to them. They had all the VMware customers, now they have VMware and Hyper-V available to well, them. Well, big gain for them, too, because then they don't have to go stand up a separate stack to right. support these type of customers, right? Right, everything stays simple, it's the same tool, it looks exactly the same whether you're in VMware, Hyper-V, or AWS, it's kind of, I, when I'm doing demos, I, I have to look and make sure I'm looking at the interface to see where I am. Wow, okay, and then, so really big gain here from, clearly from the end user side, because they can they can really increase availability and disaster recovery ability, and then also really from these guys that want to be cloud service providers too, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think the mobility for the, en the uh, enterprise customer is really what's key, because if you think about, gee, I'd love to run an application in, a in Amazon for like a week. Right. And to do that would be a month of work. Sure. And they're like, forget it. I'm not yeah. going to do that. Yeah. Now it's point, replicate, run it there for a little while. Yeah. Try piece it out. Of, makes it a piece of cake. Yes, Great. exactly. All right. So there you have it. Workload mobility is no longer this difficult ordeal uh, that you have to go through. It's relatively simple. You can move to a, a variety of targets, be it uh, Hyper-V deployment, the Amazon cloud, or, or even cloud service providers. So something that's worth looking into. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.